the culture, please, and marvel at the greatest show on earth. You don't have to buy a thing, folks. And I'll meet Princess Laughing Eyes, who will thrill you with her golden voice. Uh -huh. Ladies, notice the whiteness of her skin. And she was born a full-blooded Kickapoo Indian. If you, too, want a complexion of patrician pallor, just take Princess Laughing Eyes' herb compound. Why, it'd make Sitting Bull look like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Mr. William J. Brady. He's performed before the crowned heads of Europe, Asia, and the South Seas. Step up a little closer, folks. Prepare to be amazed at his death-defying exhibition of revolver marksmanship. Step up, folks. Step up. Up, down, all over the town, they're looking for Joe O'Grady. He's about so high and his one good eye finds every bar in the town. Here, there, and most everywhere, they're tracking down Joe O'Grady. When they get poor Joe, you will see him go down to the old county jail. Where is Joe? Where is Joe? Has anyone seen Joe O'Grady? There's a room for him and a broom for him down at the county caboose. Up, down, all. How'd you like to have that fella gunning for you? I'd like to have him gunning for some fellas I know. This town needs a man like that for sheriff. When Joe O'Grady goes out, they love us. This would be a swell spot for me to try my walk over. Listen, you've tried that stunt 50 times. I ain't gonna have you spoiling things now. wife got old and Joe's getting younger each day. Well, Joe, where is Joe? Has anyone seen Joe O'Grady? There's a room for him and a broom for him down at the county caboose. or a dozen tickets sold for the show all day. It's that medicine show, Jake. It's drawn like flies to a molasses bear. What medicine show? You know I don't get up at five in the afternoon. Oh, Professor, somebody. He's got a very good act. Well, what are you waiting for? Get the sheriff and then run out of town. Oh, Monty. Did you get hold of Ripper? I want that store taken care of tonight. The Ripper is due in town now. Something ought to pop any minute. Hmm. Well, it better. Well, what are you doing here, Whiskers? You've been breaking the law by putting a show on here without a license. License? You mean a two-bit town like this asked for a license? But now, Pa, how much is the license? We'll buy one right now. The mayor's a man for that, and he's out of town. Besides, he's mighty careful about selling licenses to disreputable characters. Disreputable? Listen. My Uncle Marmaduke Blackstone's brand of fish glue is known from one end of the state to the other. Disreputable? Why, you... Oh, we're gonna leave this town peaceable-like. You don't mind if we eat our supper first. You've got to get out of here right now. Get packed up and make it quick. Nothing in it. I keep my money in the bank. Follow me. You better head for Laramie Gap, Mr. Bell. 
children. You and your money will be safe there. Can I ever get up? Well, how can we ever get there? I never saw the day I could ride a horse. But I can still run. Where's the girl? I don't know. I don't know where she went. Come on. Take up! What happened? The sheriff's running us out of town, as usual. Well, get going in a hurry, Gabby. I'll tell you about it later. I'm heading up there. You go on. One more to chalk up against Ripper. Well, I don't know who you are or who Ripper is, but thanks for that. Don't thank us, stranger. Ripper was after you. That's good enough for us. Every man here was run out of Deadwood by him. That was some mighty fancy shooting you was doing there. Say, uh, ain't you Bet Star? That's all over. It's Bill Brady now. Well, you look good enough to me, no matter who you are. Clem Littlejohn, that's Andy Baker, and uh, Bert Snell, and Colorado Jack Breen. And the fellow that rode that horse was Matt Bennett. He was sort of the boss, so to speak. It's sure a tough losing him. Matt Bennett? The one all the reward notices are out for? And you are the gang that killed my clerk and busted up my store tonight. I know. That can't be. You were here. Then who in thunder were those men chasing us? That was Ripper and his gang. We've been getting blamed for everything they do. Matt Bennett was as fond a man as ever lived. Me and him aimed on starting up a liver stable down in Deadwood. Until Ripper come along. Well, let's be getting back to camp. The fire would feel mighty good about now. Yeah, and a little food. You've got food up here, haven't you? Well, the best in the world. Colorado Jack Breen there brought in some venison. I never saw such leather carbon. Someone here do work like that? 
Yeah, Andy there he used to run a saddle store in town till Ripper's gang robbed him of his last cent and left him for dead. And all of you were in business in Deadwood? Or trying to get in. Bert Snell, yonder, no sooner hit town to start up a restaurant till Ripper cleaned him. Well, how come they can get away with it? Aren't there any good folks in Deadwood? With all these mines booming, no one's got time to look after the other fella. And besides, most of the decent citizens are tenderfeet like me and not much good against a man like Ripper. Say, uh, do you know that girl that sent us up here? She sort of saved our bacon. Yeah, uh, Linda Barrett. She works for Ted Carver. He runs the newspaper that's trying to clean up this town. Say, how did she come to know about you people? Well, her dad is my best friend. He got held up and killed last year. He found a secret way in here. Then there's another entrance? Yeah, and it sure comes in handy when the sheriff's after you. Well, we owe her some thanks. I think I'll head down that way tomorrow and deliver them personally. You better not, young fella. Likely you won't come back. How does this sound, Linda? The city of Deadwood must realize that it is indeed a city with all the civic responsibilities that this entails. What if we are 200 miles from a railroad? Our mines have brought us wealth, theaters, even a telephone exchange, one of the first of these newfangled contraptions west of the Mississippi River. It's high time we settle down. It's all right as far as it goes. Well, don't think I won't lambaste him about that cold-blooded murder at Seth Belden's store. I'm going to ask where Sheriff Jordan was while that was going on. Makes my blood boil to think you're being endangered by a pack of ruffians like that. Shouldn't you point out those people at Laramie Gap are being blamed for Ripper's work? I know it was Ripper. I saw him with my own eyes. I know it, Linda, but I can't say it. The minute Ripper finds out I know too much about him, I'm a dead man. What about the Civic League? Can't they do anything? Not until we get a new sheriff and some law in this town. Why, what are you doing here? Well, I just come back to thank you, ma'am. We got away all right. Don't you know that whole gang's out gunning for you? Oh, I don't reckon they got too good a look at me. Besides, I bought myself a new shirt and a new hat. Maybe that'll fool them. Do you really think so? I'm afraid you might be out looking for trouble. Not me, ma'am. Anyway, I'd hate to think anybody could keep me from coming to see you. I admire your courage, fellow, but I doubt your wisdom. This is the... Uh, Bill Brady. Mr. Carver. Howdy. Still, maybe that's what we need in this town. A little more courage and a little less wisdom. Mister, you sure have a pleasant way calling a man crazy. You going out, ma'am? Yes, I'm going to interview Mrs. Green, the postmaster's wife. She's just had twins. Well, do you mind if I walk a ways with you? I'd like to find out more about this time. See you again. Now, that's what I call a right fast-moving young fella. Yes, isn't he? This coach is covered with iron plates. First one I ever saw like that. Nobody's ever held up that stagecoach yet. And millions of dollars have traveled to the railroad in it. Sure. Right away. Goodbye. Hey, Monty. Come in here. What are you doing awake so early? That medicine show fellow's back in town. The one Ripper ran into last night. Where is he? Walk along with a Barrett girl, calm as you please. This town's gonna learn nobody can shoot back at us and get away with it. Take care of them. I'd rather wait and let Ripper handle them. I said take care of them. Sure, boss. Mrs. Green can't see me for a few minutes. I'll have to wait. Well, that's all right. I'll wait with you. <laughs> they deserve a better town to grow up in. You seem to intend to stay here. Why? Well, for one thing, I like the people. Is basically one of them. Besides, business was so good, Gertie, that I'd like to fix it so we could put a show on here. Anyway, I've been batting around the country so long that I'd kind of like to settle down. Some place like Deadwood. Is there another reason? Those men at the Gap. You'd like to help them, wouldn't you? I know Brett Starr would. What do you know about Brett Starr? Well, I work for a newspaper, and all our news doesn't come from Deadwood. What's that got to do with me? The press service sent us a photograph of Brett Starr. Of course, we weren't equipped to print it. Well, I don't reckon I can out-talk a photograph, but I like uh, Bill Brady better. I'd be proud to be Brett Starr. I was born in the West, and I know there can be good reasons for shooting. Maybe.
Oh, excuse me, young fellow. What do you intend to do with him? You surely don't mean to put him in jail, do you? That's exactly what I aim to do. <laughs> well, I admire the gesture, but I warn you, that little weasel won't stay there long. Do you know him? Well, I ought to. I'm the judge here. But I never get a chance to try the men I'd like to. And Monty Burns here is one of them. What's your name, young fellow? Bill Brady. Judge Gary. Glad to know you, Judge. I want to see the look on the sheriff's face when you hand Monty over to him. This fellow just threw a knife at me, and that's attempted murder in any man's town, even in Deadwood. Slap some iodine on him and lock him up. Do it, you know what it'll get you. Are you going to lock him up, or do I have to? Why can't you convict any of these men? Aren't you a federal judge? The sheriff makes sure that I never get the evidence. They're afraid to harm a federal judge for fear it'll bring in the troops. But my court is just a mockery. Isn't there somebody in town who can do something about that? Well, there's the Civic League. I've talked to them, but nothing happens. Well, maybe we can do something about it, Judge. Well, I wish you luck, Brady. Thanks. Gents of the Civic League, as you know, the Seth Belton store ceased to compete last night. It's high time the way he was undercutting my prices at the Emporium. So, under our agreement, we owe Ripper $2,500 for relieving us of Belton's competition. $2,500? Why, Seth Belton wasn't doing that much business. Ripper's costing us a lot more than we expected in the beginning. Mr. Stark, will you please collect the money from the gentleman? You got no kick at paying Ripper, considering he and his men knocked over 32 miners last month for a total of $26,000 which we took a 50-50 split for spotting the prospects in our business establishments. I'd like to take a look at those figures. They look all right. When I just swore I spotted more than 32 prospects in my store alone. You can't expect Ripper to get them all. And when you figure that you doubled your profit by selling those fool miners their outfits and then collected their take, Ripper's doing plenty. Maybe so. That medicine show gunman Brady brought in Monty here. Judge Gary was with him and I had to lock him up for a few minutes. What do you want me to do with him? Do? Nothing, of course. But the, the bail. Don't you think I ought to have a little bail? Yeah, mighty little. Here's a dollar. Buy yourself a drink. What happened? I missed him and he got me in the arm. He's greased lightning with a gun. Nothing to worry about, gentlemen. This Bill Brady seems to be pretty tough, but we'll take care of him. Well, I think the main business of the meeting's been attended to. Shall we adjourn to my bar? Yes. Yeah. Give this 12.50 to Ripper and tell him to see me. something for you, Gabby. Sure to be a bill. Never got anything else in my whole life. Why don't you open it? It's been getting along all right for seven months. No need to bother it now. I met Judge Gary today, Clem. He claims he can do something if we give him the right kind of evidence. But that's hard to get. It might not be, if we can find out why Ripper's been keeping the folks from starting up in business. Well, I've always said he was doing it for that civic need. But Ted Carver always writes in his paper that the Civic League is for law and order. But maybe Ted Carver's been fooled. That league is made up of all the big businessmen in Deadwood. Maybe they're trying to kill off comp, trying to petition. You notice they never invited Seth Belden to join them. 
There are none of the rest of them newcomers in Deadwood. If they were honest, a feller like Jake Marvel couldn't belong to them. Why, it's as plain as day. Ripper works for Marvel. Marvel works for the Civic League. Sheriff works for all of them. What you fellas have been needing is somebody to figure these things out for you. That's right. And do something about it. You're darn tootin'. We've been thinking we need someone to show us how to clean up Deadwood so we can go back there again. Well, of course, I didn't mean to hint. <laughs> so we're asking you, Bill, if you'll take the job. Thanks. I'll do what I can, but I can't do it here. Hey, Gabby, I just found out today that the sheriff can't keep us from putting on her show. That is, if we stay on the outside of the city limits. Well, let's go down tomorrow and set up in business right on the edge of the town. Yeah, what about Ripper? Won't he be shooting us up? Ripper? <laughs> you just leave Ripper to me. That is, Bill and me. <laughs> Sundown on the rangeland, and we're hidden down the trail. Get Didn't I tell you business is booming, Deadwood? This is nearly all that's left. While you're selling that, I'll mix up another batch. That is, if I need all that rattlesnake sundown juice. <laughs> on the rangeland, and the herd is looking frail. Hear that maverick ball, he'll be missing his mall tonight. Give me that letter. Anybody thinks we're going to pay him anything, we might as well find out who it is. Jogging across the plain <laughs> To the squeaking of the saddle and the rattle and rain I saw the last one. Oh, no, don't bother me with such trivial matters. Read that. Read it. Read what it says. I don't think it says what I think it says. Please be advised that from the estate of your Uncle Marmaduke W. Blackstone, deceased, you have been willed a sum of $36,000. Read that last part again. $36,000. That's what I thought it said. Three, six, oh. This money will be forwarded upon your order. Well, what are you going to do? Telegraph office in town, ain't they? I'll wire first thing in the morning and they send it to the bank. <gasps> oh, we're rich. Get along, get along, get along, old pal. Down the train. All right, Francis, it's your turn to sing. Sing? I'm going to do more than sing. <laughs> oh, I did it. <laughs> Something I can do for you, sir? This is no minor transaction. I should like to see the president. I'm the president. Oh. Well, I'm Blackstone, Professor Mortimer Blackstone. I'm expecting some money by wire from New York. Did he get here? I'm very glad to know you, Professor. Yes, it came a half hour ago. I have the confirmation here. Rather a large amount. A mere trifle. I'll take it in $1,000 bills and some small change. You have some identification, of course. Of course, certainly, certainly. We don't have many calls for $1,000 bills, but I think I can find enough to cover this amount. Just a moment, please. There you are. I had a hard time rounding it up. Hmm. Issued by the Third Avenue Bank in New York, eh? Nice little city in New York. Got a fine zoo there. If you don't mind my saying so, that's a lot of money to carry around this town. I'd be glad to keep it on deposit here for you. Oh, think nothing of it. Why, I've been taking care of large sums all my life. Besides, I've got a lady here. Why, my dear child, 
A few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. <laughs> hey, you ain't never had no fancy clothes like them yourself. Oh, think nothing of it, Papa. A few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. <laughs> I was going to be an opera singer and perform before the crown heads of Europe. I could have bought six elephants, four giraffes, a gorilla. And... I heard about your robbery. I can't tell you how sorry I am. This is what we've been up against for years. Well, I'll write another editorial. I might as well write them in water for all the good they do. If Jake Marvel's a man Ripper works for, he must bank a lot more money than any theater owner has a right to. Are you hinting, Shepard? If we found that $35,000 entered at the bank in Jake Marvel's name, wouldn't that be enough evidence for Judge Gary to act? We thought of that, but... Well, we tried to get a court order to check a lot of those accounts, but the judge can't issue one without more evidence. Then why don't we break into the bank and take a look for ourselves? I suppose that would be technically a criminal act, but we can't think about that now. It's just what the judge has been waiting for. Well, well what are we waiting for? Here he is. This way, Gabby. It's our only chance. Coming out the front. and that old mesquite bush got away. I know what's going to happen before it even begins. And you two fools can't carry out a simple order. Wait here. Well, we couldn't use the law against Bill Brady before, but we can now. Get a warrant out for that medicine show bunch. And deputize the Ripper here and all his men. We're gonna give that sniveling judge some men to hang that he ain't been expecting. Where's Andy? Sheriff Jordan shot him. I reckon we're all outlaws now, Clem. Well, what'd you find out? We got the book, but we haven't had a chance to read it yet. Let's see now. M for Marvel. Oh, yeah. here it is. Marvel, J. Deposits this week, $613.22. Withdrawals, $521. Present balance, $1,635.24. Well, that don't sound like much for Marvel. No, anybody running a big theater and bar. Charging the kind of prices he does. He ain't depositing my $35,000. Well, maybe Marvel ain't back of Ripper after all. Well, I'm betting he is. A man like that might figure he'd have to get out of Deadwood in a hurry. You mean he sends his money, I mean, my money outside? He could send it on that treasure coast to Cheyenne, Denver, or any place. Ain't that a plum, hideous sort? My money's already in Cheyenne or even Chicago. It can't be, Gabby. That treasure coach only goes out once a week. And it doesn't leave again until tomorrow. Then Jake Marble must have my money around somewhere. Yeah, but he ain't gonna keep it around where we can get out until that coach leaves. I can identify it, too. Them's the only thousand-dollar bills around. And the bank would have the numbers. That'd sure be evidence to Judge Gary. I guess no one could stick up that coach. Not with all them guards inside where you can't get at them. Hey, Gabby. Remember all that experiment you was telling me about? I'll never forget it. You're right, Bill. That coach is plumb unrobable. 
Now that you remind me, I sure come across some mighty strange things when I was inventing my elixir. What are you two driving at? Things are bad enough now without you getting yourself shot up or put in jail. Why, daughter, ain't we just been saying it can't be done? Well, I guess I'll adjourn to my laboratory. I just feel like doing a little experiment. <laughs> if there'd been another press in town, I could have refused the business. I can't understand it. Sheriff Jordan's never around when he's needed. How he managed to be on hand when the boys were leaving the Just bank... Just bad luck. And the killing of poor Andy Baker gives them proof that the Laramie Gap gang are outlaws. And Bill wanted to settle in Deadwood. Linda, are you sorry for his sake alone? I thought perhaps you were one of the reasons Bill wanted to stay. Of course not. I hardly knew him. I'm glad to hear that. You must know how I feel about you, Linda. Although I suppose this isn't quite the place for what I was about to say. Then maybe you'd better wait, Ted. Backing into me that way, don't you know how to drive? Now you got us all jammed up. Very careful. Thirty-five thousand dollars. I'll show them. Come on, get down. Bank, New York. Here it is. This don't say Jake Marble. C.O. Door Carver, First National Bank, Chicago, Illinois. Well, it ain't only incredible, it's downright unbelievable. Theodore Carver. Well, that's bound to be Ted Carver, no two ways about it. How much is there? 12,000 even. Then we are getting it all back after all. Here's Jake Marble's. Here's five more of your thousand dollar bills, Gabby. Consigned to the Drover's Bank in Cheyenne. Maybe Marvel is just using Ted Carver's name. Then why would Marvel send some of it in his own name, too? It doesn't make sense. Unless Carver's really the man behind all this. But what about Linda? She works for Carver. I'll never believe she's mixed up in it. Here's three more. See, there are three in all six of these envelopes. That makes the other 18,000, Gabby. Michael Barton. Say, doesn't he run the livery stable? Yeah, and here's Richard Sneed, owner of the general store. And D.L. Stark and Harold Hughes. Why, he's the express agent. And Peter Wilson. Say, that's the Civic League. All these fellas belong to it. We've got some tall thinking to do, and we can't do it here. Let's head for the gap.
say, I just got a message from Rock Point Station. That gang from Larry McGap just held up the gold coach. Bill Brady was with him. Where's the sheriff? Let's get up a posse. The sheriff can't handle this. We will. Bill Brady wouldn't do a thing like that. Coach guards couldn't have been mistaken about who held them up. Thanks, Joe. I'll get an extra out right away. I know it's bad for you, Linda. You thought a lot of Bill Brady. He did mean a lot to me, but I realize now I really never knew very much about him. Well, we've got to get out an extra. I know. But the minute it's in type, I'm going to the gas. But Brady's probably left the country. Maybe he has. But if he's still there, I'm going to see him. We just got another message at the express office. None of the bullion was taken, just the currency. Whose currency? Every packet that contained one of those thousand dollar bills. It's clear now, too clear. We gotta work, work fast. Others. They're guarding the pass. We're expecting the posse to attack. I was afraid you might have left. Not me. Didn't I tell you once that I am to stay in Deadwood? Yes, but you didn't say anything about robbing stagecoaches. Was that your idea? It sure was, and it worked like a charm. But why? We was getting evidence for Judge Gary. You mean you didn't take anything? Nothing but the professor's money. And it certainly ain't no crime to take back what's yours. Then you got the evidence for the judge? We got the money all right. And it was under Jake Marvel's name? It's hard to say, Linda, knowing how you feel about him. But an even dozen of Dad's bills were found consigned under Ted Carver's name. Ted Carver? You don't mean... We don't think you've got anything to do with it. We know you only work for him. You don't believe it. You don't think Ted's a thief. Well, he had the money. Well, somebody must be using his name. Ted's been fighting this sort of thing ever since he came here. It looked that way, except in there's a skunk in the chicken coop. Do you remember when we decided to break into the bank? The sheriff and Ripper come along just as pat as you please. The only man that could have tipped him off was Ted Carver. He was there when we planned the whole thing. Yeah, but he wasn't around when we figured out that stage hold up. And it come off slicker than a weasel. But you might as well accuse me. I was with you when you decided to break into the bank. I thought you had become a real bandit and I was wrong. Maybe you're making the same mistake about Ted Carver. Maybe. Will you do us a favor? Of course. Gabby? I don't think we ought to risk keeping your money around here. Huh? Young feller, are you even toying with some pernicious idea that I should let that $35,000 out of my hands? It's not only money, it's evidence. If a posse should break in here and take it away from us, everything would be wasted. I think Bill's right, Professor. And if he is right, which I ain't admitting, none whatsoever. Where's he gonna put my money that's safer than here, where it belongs? I figured to have Linda take it to Judge Gary. That is, if you're willing to risk it. Then no matter what happens, the judge got the goods on him. That's right. He's the only one who can use that evidence. And the quicker we get it to him, the better. Well, daughter, it was nice while we had it. Here it is, in the same express company envelope them skunks shipped it in, endorsed by him to their banks all over the country. And don't forget, young lady, you're carrying a whole dad blame circus there. You better hurry on in, and as soon as it gets dark enough for me to slip into town, I'll get in touch with Judge Gary. If that posse don't get here first to sort of occupy your time. What'd you find out? Well, in the first place, I found a new entrance to the gap straight across from Indian Rock. A hidden opening in the cliff. Hmm. Well, never mind that now. What about the girl? Well, I followed her to the camp. She went into the cabin. A few minutes later, when she rode away, I followed her until she got to the judge's house. Then I came here. You never got close enough to hear anything? Look, a guard's post. I, I was afraid... You'd to... be afraid to get close to a rabbit. How do you do, Judge? How do you do? Linda, I heard you were here. I've been worried about you. What'd you find out the gap? They... They denied having anything to do with the stage holdup. And Bill Brady, was he there? He must have found some sort of evidence, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Linda couldn't find out anything. 
That's what you came here to tell me. Maybe they were lying to me. I don't know what to think. This is a great disappointment to me. I had hoped to accomplish something at last. Well, there's still a paper to get out, you know. I'm going to the telegraph office and wire Fort Smiley for a troop of cavalry. This money is sufficient evidence for me to declare Deadwood under martial law and clean it up for good and all. Either Bill Brady lied to Linda or she and the judge are lying to me. The judge has got that money, we've got to get it, and that's your job. Mine? I don't like messing with the government. I said get it. I think he saw me. How hard to hit him? I don't know. Pretty hard. I don't like being mixed up in this federal stuff. That's a lot of money. I was thinking the same thing, boss. With that and what's already in Cheyenne, you and me could live mighty well someplace else. Yeah. If the judge dies, or if he lives to identify you, either way, there'll be soldiers coming in here. Yeah, and that Bill Brady's still on the loose. Well, we could get packed and out of here in time to catch the night stage. That's it. Let's get going. Nice suits, aren't they, Jake? Better than you ever dreamed of wearing before I had you organize a civic league. It was fine while the going was easy, but you couldn't stand a little excitement, could you, Jake? Not while you could run out with my money. Well, we'll put a stop to this. Made it off for these killers to hold up the coach. Now they have to go in and murder Jake Marvel. Come on, let's pull that gap apart. Sure, there's 40 men here, champing at the bit. That editor fellow wants to see you before we leave for the gap. Wonder what he wants. You better stay here. Evening, Sheriff. Howdy. I felt it my civic duty to inform you that I've discovered a back entrance into Laramie Gap. Back entrance? I've been wondering I suggest how... that while part of your posse keep those outlaws busy at the Gap itself, you and a few of your men attack them from the rear. Well, Carver, the way your paper's been running me down, I didn't expect any help from you. Well, I admit that my editorial policy's been against you, but that was before I discovered that Bill Brady and his gang were the real troublemakers. Now, I'm as anxious as anyone to see them caught. That's fine. With your paper's support, we can do a lot around here. Well, just so long as it's honest. Now, if you're ready, I'll lead you into the back entrance to the gap. But I... Hello, Linda. Now that you've been at the scene of the murders, I want you to check that story I wrote. Old Harry's got it set up in tight. So you know about the back way? Of course. I would have kept it to myself if those friends of yours hadn't betrayed my confidence by robbing the treasure coach. Betrayed your confidence? You know why they did it. You know they aren't thieves. What's the matter? We're locked in. Have you a key? Why, no. Funny you do a thing like that. What happened? I was I was just coming back from the telegraph office. Monty Burns. Did he get the money? Yes, they got the money. I'm afraid we're licked. Will you be all right? Yes, yes, I'll be all right. Well, I'm going after Monty. Every man in town will be after you. I'll have to risk that. If Monty gives that evidence to Carver, he's completely in the clear. All right, I'll be seeing you, Bill. Okay. See Monty Burns? 
Lonnie Burns? Lonnie Burns. He's dead on a macro. Dead? Who killed him? That Laramie Gap bunch, I guess. Say, ain't you? Hey! Jed's Gary's hurt, Linda. You'll have to look after us. But those men out there. I'll try to scare them off long enough to. All right, I'm going to go out of here. Somebody down there sure as you're a foot high. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of them. And they're just waiting for sunup before the rushes. I better go back and wait the rest. Looks to me like we're going to have our hands full. We ought to be around back about sunrise. We'll start in when we hear you shooting. Better keep scattered out. Anybody but the sheriff's gang. We don't want no innocent blood on our hands. I can't see nothing but innocent blood to shoot at. All the gilly blood seems to be keeping to the rear. That's Engine Rock. So that must be the place over there. Monty said it was right across. like rats in a trap. This 
convicts under martial law. You're under arrest. Where's Bill Brady? Right here, Judge. Bill! Are you all right, Bill? I'm a lot better off than Carver. Oh, you got him, eh? Hello, Linda. Carver's lying right over there, and I'm betting he's got the money. How'd you fellas get here? They came from Fort Smiley and answered to my wire. And I brought them out as fast as I could. Well, what about Gabby and the others? Gabby and his daughter are on their way over here. Clem and his bunch, along with the posse that was trying to capture them, are under arrest. That's the only way we can stop the battle. Let's go and see what we can find on Carver, Lieutenant. Yeah, what you need is some of my elixir. Why, it makes bullets plumb beneficial. Are you sure it'll work? Sure, certainly I'm sure. Why, this elixir of my... Just between you and me, in this particular case, I figure maybe the elixir could use a little help. I reckon I can leave that to you, huh? <laughs> I think you can release the Laramie Gap people now, Lieutenant. I just took this off ex-Sheriff Jordan, and I don't think we'll have any trouble getting the voters of Deadwood to make it legal. Thanks, Judge. Looks like I'm going to be settled down for fair. Do you think you're going to like it? <laughs>